A coffee company out of Edwardsville is expanding and you might just recognize it by name. Goshen Coffee has opened its second location in Soulard, but after meeting one of its newer owners, Jennifer Huey, I just had to share the interesting story and message behind it all. If you're anything like me, then you know that there is just so much more to grabbing a cup of coffee than convenience, which is exactly why the 20 year old coffee company Goshen is still going strong. My husband and I got into the company about two years ago. My brother-in-law and my sister owned the company prior to that, um, and they had owned it for about eight years, so they had bought it from the original um, person that started Goshen Coffee. And he, really, my brother-in-law bought it because he loved coffee, and the guy was going to shut the business down, and he's like, I need to buy the company, and so he did, and then he approached us um, literally three weeks before COVID hit and asked if we wanted to um, go into business with him, and so here we are, and I am the CEO and running the company. We've opened two cafes in the last year and a half. Just like that, the Edwardsville Roasting Company got a facelift with new branding and expanded with two cafes where you can sip on your coffee, tea, or have a bite, all in an environment full of good energy. Goshen stands for good, stuff energy will say for now um, but it's really g-o-s-h-e-n and we really are about that energy and putting it out there i think that's kind of how we describe it and it's the good energy that keeps the customers coming back for more now jennifer proudly serves goshen on grocery store shelves like deerberg's and whole foods and of course in their cafes over in edwardsville and soulard i mean we want to be nationwide so we want people in you know portland to be able to enjoy goshen coffee and you know, in New York City. So, you know, our goal is really to expand the company and to get into a lot more grocery stores and grocery store chains. Quality comes first, which is why Goshen has a chief coffee officer to analyze each and every batch before it heads out the door and into your cup. My name's Tony Auger. I'm the chief coffee officer here at Goshen Coffee. Basically, these are like samples where every time we roast one, one batch, um, we pull a little sample of and I'm gonna go through and make sure that everything's tasting exactly like it's supposed to. But then I also have a couple coffees down at the very end where I need to make like a purchasing decision on, which is a much more, um, I'm putting coffee like under a really big microscope at that point. And if you're not a coffee drinker, Malik, we're looking at you, don't worry. There are so, so many drink options for you too. From teas to lemonades and syrup made in-house. You're bound to find something you fall in love with and the staff will make sure of it. The most rewarding part to be honest is seeing when people come in and get a drink and they're like this is the best cup of coffee I've ever had. At Goshen Coffee we obviously focus on our coffee and the coffee experience but we have a lot of drinks that don't have coffee in them so we fresh squeeze all of our lemonade. We make um, iced tea from Big Heart Tea which is a local St. Louis company as well. So we have a lot of creative and really cool drinks for the summer that involve our iced tea and our lemonade. My favorite right now is the strawberry lemonade, which is quite delightful. You can stroll through in Soulard or drive through in Edwardsville, but either way, you're leaving with that good energy and a cup full of something refreshing to go along with it. Now that was Goshen Coffee. They have two different locations, one in Edwardsville, one in Soulard. You also just mentioned me, uh, heard me mention someone named Tony here. Now he's the chief coffee officer at Goshen and he's with us this morning to explain exactly what he does yeah. and how he does it. So thank you, Tony, yeah, for coming in studio. Sure, this is awesome. Um, so really, um, one of the big jobs that I do is called coffee, cupping coffees. Um, it's a process that takes 30 to an hour maybe sometimes. It just kind of depends on how many coffees we taste. Right. And at, at Goshen, we actually taste every single coffee wow. we roast. Um, so I just kind of wanted to walk you through the whole process. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Yeah. So the first thing we do is what's called like a fragrance evaluation. And to do that, you just kind of shake the cup a little bit. And then you want to do like quick little sniffs. Okay. And so this coffee that we're going to taste today is what's called a natural process. Gotcha. It's our Ethiopia Yebisele natural. Um, and so it should be really fruity compared to what you're normally yeah. going to okay, get. I'm excited. Uh, and then the next part of our cupping is what we call uh, aroma. So once water gets in there, you can actually start to get a lot more um, smells oh, and yeah. aroma out of it. it. Smells really good. <laughs> so if you want to take a little sniff, just okay. get like really close. And it should smell like 
a lot like strawberries uh -huh. or blueberries and a little bit of like a high acid yeah. type thing. A little more fruity than your normal. Exactly, exactly. Darker ribs. And then this right here is what we call breaking the crust. So okay. to do this and I'll let you do it, okay. you just want to get like really close to the to the cup of coffee and Push and it? push it back a little okay, bit. Okay, and as I'm doing this, explain yep. to me like what exactly we're doing as we're So there's breaking. a lot of like gases that are gonna come up. Um, and with a really trained palate, you're able to get those gases to come up and really get a lot more aroma Was out that of it. right? Yeah, you did it pretty good. Now see. <laughs> yeah. This Show Me St. Louis weather update is brought to you by Vit Heating and Air Conditioning. Version right. of it. So the last step is uh, one I already brewed. This Show Me St. Louis weather update is brought to you by Vit Heating and Air Conditioning. Story Cardinals in coffee we have almost a thousand different wow. flavor compounds the hard part is that bitter normally is really high on that but then all these little subtle details underneath it Wow and so you're really building this mental library mm -hmm. um, and so no, normally the best way to taste different coffees is maybe if you go to a cafe or if you are able to visit a coffee roaster you can ask them to taste coffee side by side um, and that's when you start being able to see just how different coffee right. can taste. Right. Yeah. Get yourself a little notebook. Exactly. Start some exactly. Notes. And okay. that's exactly how I started in yeah. the industry. Yeah. Now I love to ask him. Yep. You know, is ignorance bliss when it comes to <laughs> coffee tasting? Is it nice to not really yeah. have that? Uh, you know, for me, it's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> um, but You're picky actually, now. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but really, it's. For a lot of people, we just want to make a cup of coffee where someone takes a sip and they are taken back for a second and they say, that's good. I may not know why that's good, but that's really the intro to like the rabbit hole and how good coffee can taste and everything that goes involved into making a good cup of coffee. Yeah, this is the coolest thing ever. So we've had you on the show before yeah. when you just opened that Soulard location yeah, in Goshen. Yeah. And this kind of took me by surprise. I've never heard anything like yeah, it. Yeah. So how did you get into this? So what I did, um, I actually started as a barista and I was working part-time someplace else and I ended up just like liking coffee so much and I went down that rabbit hole someone made me a, a cup of coffee where I was like oh my gosh this is better than I, I had no idea coffee could taste like this right um, and so I started learning more learning more myself but also um, I got a job as a head roaster in town um, with another company um, and then when I had that job, I just kept going and I actually ended up going into competitions um, and like going to national competitions as well as regional competitions. Um, and then I really wanted to learn more about the industry, like the export and import side of it. So got into that side and really just was able to understand how much it takes. That chain, that link chain is so long before coffee even right. gets exported. Which you wouldn't know, typically. No, for sure, for sure. We always say it touches at least 20 different hands before the coffee gets on a shipping container and then gets to us finally. In the cleanliest way possible. And exactly, <laughs> exactly. If one person isn't like in love with their job or like does the cleanliness as possible, coffee's not gonna taste good. That's right, so yep. you gotta get down and dirty with the coffee. Exactly, here. yeah, for sure. Again, Go Goshen Coffee, so they are doing this with every single batch before it goes out the door and into your cup. Yeah, The sure. good stuff. Yeah. And you can attest to that. Yeah, for sure. Tony, thank you so much no, for being thank here with you. us it's today. Awesome. We wanted to be able to really show you guys this process, and like he said, this is kind of the mini version, but very cool to have you. Yeah, so awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it a lot. Yeah, of course. Now